When you first open the build, this is where the scene is located. By default, you operate in aerial mode. You can also have ground mode to go to ground, or drone mode. It allows you to operate around the site as if you were a drone. For the purposes of this build, aerial mode will be how you navigate for most of the time. You can also use the right mouse button to navigate more quickly around the site. In order to show the proposal, select Show 12D Layout. This can be turned off by selecting Show Existing Site. When you show the 12D Layout, you can also turn the houses on independently. Most of the key layers can be accessed from the top. They include the development site boundary, the lot lines, and the contours. By placing them at the top, you can access them easily while looking at other layers. For example, when looking at the lot layout, you can turn on key sites for subdivisions. I will turn off the contours, open space, and again you can see how this relates to the lot layout, drainage reserves, and the residual lots. This button here turns the legends on and off. You should note that only one planning overlay or menu item can be selected at a time. For the cadastral information, I'm going to turn the boundary off from at the top and just keep the lot lines. I will turn the development boundary on from the menu item. Again, I'll turn off the lot boundaries now. You can see the lot lines there. And there is the existing Ballina Heights estate. Contours. Again, both of these items can actually be selected from the key layers menu. but they are accessible from this menu item. For the road layout, I'm going to turn on the development boundary. The existing carriageways relate to the existing Ballina Heights estate. You can see them there. Then there's the internal collector roads, shown in purple the local streets and the fire trails. Crown roads, again we can select a future subdivision, there's the open space and the crown roads are shown clearly with a hatch. The zoning, there's the development lots shown in blue. The simple lot layout is the same as the lot lines, you can see there. So I turn them on. And then there's the medium density and standard subdivision land use types, all being toggled on independently there. The staging plan. There is the national release sequence boundary. We've had to abbreviate it in order for it to fit in the legend. And what we have done is put the menu item as an overlay here to the side. So you can see there that the sequence number is referring to the residential lots and the cumulative total. Key sites for subdivision are shown in white open space and residual lots. 
Now for the heritage items, we've only got heritage rock walls, which you can see in the menu item. For the bulk earthworks plan, unfortunately we couldn't get the CAD data, so we've had to rely upon this raster image. The cut is shown in tones of red, and the fill is shown in tones of blue. For the steep slopes, there are the key sites. I'm going to turn on the toggle lines now. Open space, drainage reserves. Then there are the different types of slopes, 15 to 20%, and then greater than 20%. Finally, there are the building envelopes shown within each of those lots. Retaining walls are shown within the, r the road reserve and within private property. for the endangered ecological communities and the SEP14 wetlands. I'm going to turn off the lot lines and just operate with the aerial photograph. SEP14 uh, wetlands are over here. That's not the full extent of the SEP14 wetlands it is the areas directly adjacent to the site. It's worth noting that for a lot of these survey type overlays it's more useful to just have the aerial shown when viewing them for the first time and then if you want to relate them back to the subdivision you can turn the lot lines on and off. Then we have the mosquito buffer. Again, key sites for future subdivision. Open space, drainage reserves, residual lots, and the mosquito buffers themselves. Shown here in that tone there. And again, you can turn the lot lines at any time and see how they all relate. Trees to be retained, we've broken into two different types, trees to be retained and the camphor laurel trees. Hairy joint grass habitat. Again, this is only one item, so it has no legend. Revegetation is broken into freshwater wetland, lowland rainforest regeneration, lowland rainforest revegetation, swamp sclerophyll forest regeneration, and finally swamp sclerophyll forest revegetation. Brolga records, there are only two and they are well off the site, shown here. Stormwater catchments, there are three. Stormwater Catchment A, Stormwater Catchment B, and Stormwater Capture C. For the flood levels, we only receive very basic raster information. For the 100 year flood records, and in the 50 year flood records, the resolution of the images were quite good and so you can get down quite close and quite clearly, clearly see the extent of the flood zones. Unfortunately for the 20 year flood areas the 5 year flood records and the flood event dominance the quality of the images we received was quite poor. For these toggles they are more clearly viewed independently than some of the other planning overlays. Legal points of, of discharge. This goes back to site.
we have the water courses, which are the blue lines, and then the two water bodies shown over here. Water body 1 and water body 2. Location of monitoring sites. Again, these are typically outside the site. Water level monitoring and then the rain gauges. For the sediment or bioretention basins, we have the sediment or bi bioretention basins. Clearly shown here. Bioswales. And then there are also maintenance tracks to access them. For Dead Man Creek Road, we have Dead Man's Creek Road here, and then the culvert, and you can use the zoom bar to speed up, is located there. Location of downstream properties, we've put a white splash underneath each of the property owners so you can clearly read the labels. We understand that it's these properties that are of most interest and as you can see they're clearly visible. The North Creek catchment is a very large catchment and extends all the way beyond the extent of our, s of our build. For the bushfire asset protection zones, we have individually modelled each of the different asset protection zone widths. So, I find it is easier to view these with just the lot lines. The APZs for 8 metres. 10 metres, 12 metres, 14 metres, and so on and so forth. We have specifically created individual toggles for each of these so that you can more easily view the different widths. If at any point you need to measure, you have your measure tools available and what may be of some use is to be able to take a snapshot at any point and annotate the markup. These screenshots can either be saved as a PDF or emailed as required. That concludes this user guide. Thank you.